You've been listening to Shit Cosplayers Say, an LVC production. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Podcast SCS. Our website is lawvcosplay.com. We were talking about our craft Have a fun, rooms and crazy we con or cosplay related story. About our craft absurd rooms cosplay since, questions. Um, or just something in general to share with us. Your floor now? Email us I at know it's really exciting. SCS um, you at can gmail.com. see the floor. In Thank my you craft for listening. Right and like, remember, the entire thing. just because you can, Ow, doesn't I'm very proud of myself. You I got rid of like three trash bags worth of stuff that I decided that I no longer wanted or needed. That's yeah. kind of what I did too. <laughs> yeah, it was I amazing. I, I guess I did more for the weekend than I thought now that I yeah. think about it. It's it's not and not like regular size trash bags. These are like the jumbo like garage size trash bags. Yeah. Like legit massive trash bags of just stuff. And I'm like, gone, 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 gone. Don't want it. Nope. And everything else I got sorted into like it's not as perfect as I want it, but it's at least organized by like type. So like I have all my beads and rhinestones and jewelry stuff like together in one little thing. And I've got all of my like applique together in one little thing with the embroidery trims. And then I've got like all of my like bias tapes and ribbons together in one thing. And it's it appeases me deep in my soul. So there there is a floor in my craft room. <gasps> I also do you remember back when we used to sew in my parents' basement that flip up wood table? Uh huh. It is now in my craft room. Ooh! So I can move the camera and you can you can see it, but it's yes, it's right there. <gasps> there it is. But there's a floor. <laughs> oh my there's goodness! Not, there's that crap everywhere. Look at this. <gasps> Look, this long table. Well, it's a little covered right now because I need to like organize the stuff at the end. But like the table's usable. It doesn't I just see have that. things. And then the other side of the room is empty. <laughs> like, there's nothing. Oh, my goodness. On Look at us. The other side. So my craft room is extremely small. Um, and I will probably put a video up on Instagram before this even comes out. Because I did put a video up on at least TikTok of it beforehand. And it was a nightmare. <laughs> um, just to motivate myself to get it done. I'm in a very small room. Um, I would say my room's probably 8 by 12 at best um i'm not even sure it's eight wide i feel like it might be between six and eight it's very small it's a small kid's bedroom essentially so Mm -hmm. i have to get like three different types of studios into this itty bitty room and um it was non-functional for a while and now i uh was able to cut out and surge and pattern some things for ICL this weekend. I chopped up all the saris, RIP saris, but um, I really R. only R. needed <laughs> the white parts of the saris, so I cut <laughs> off the color. <laughs> Shh, this is fine. They'll get used. It's okay because the dye jobs were really uneven. And yes, it would have bothered were. me. Um, <laughs> they were so uneven. But like the pieces, the colored pieces cut off on their own are pretty. So maybe we'll find a use for those at some point anyway. Um, probably. Because um, there's about a yard of the reds on each end. And then the, the giant border that went along nice, the whole nice. thing. Um, and same with the pink. So um, I did cut those up to and surge them because they started fraying the second I cut them. Of course. <laughs> um, of course they did, because they're imitation silk. So they just start praying uh, the second you cut it. <laughs> um, those are all cut up and put away, and I started with the dark purple part. So we'll see. So I guess I got more done than I felt like I got done this weekend. Yeah? Because I was starting to feel like I didn't get anything done. But I guess I I did. So. I got a lot done, and my legs definitely could feel it. So <laughs> my craft room is probably about twice the size of Elle's space, yeah. but it's very inconveniently laid out. It is very long and narrow, and it's all windows. I have no walls. There are zero walls. All four walls are windows. That is the downside so, of that space. That, like, that is the downside. You have it's technically a porch. Light. But yes, you I have, have amazing natural to, light. We're going to have to get creative on things you can hang on the windows to, like, store stuff. 
Well, I'm not going to be hanging things on the windows. I did get I did get cabinetry underneath, and then I'm going to con my husband, I think, into putting shelves for things that I want to display mm. up top. Mm-hmm. Um, and I need to hire somebody to come in and finish my two closet spaces, but I at least have stuff stored in them now as opposed to not before. So that's really exciting. I have maybe two paper boxes and two gallon Ziploc bags left to kind of like sift through. But other than that, I have touched literally everything in my craft space in the last weekend. Go us. I know, right? It's so crazy. Productive the weekend after a con and the weekend before Christmas. I know, right? What? It's so weird. It's so I weird. I mean, I'm going to assume that part of my productivity is that my ADHD medication is working. Yay, by the way. Um, I'm very happy for you. Med update. These work. I don't want to ever go back. I also have not had a migraine since I started taking them either. Ooh. So apparently I talked to a friend of ours whose family has been involved in migraine research forever and apparently... Happy side effect of this med- medication can be reduction in headaches and migraines. So that's awesome. Yeah, two for one because that was becoming a problem. Can't miss a day of work a month because you have a migraine. Work doesn't like that. <laughs> no, I can't imagine that they would. Yeah, um, it's still quiet in my brain and it's still weird. <laughs> so weird. It's so we were weird. actually talking about mental health conditions this morning over coffee during coffee break at work. Yeah. Somebody was talking about, they're like, well, I think I need to go see somebody for this. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure I have undiagnosed ADHD. No, really? (laughs) So we were (laughs) chit-chatting about it. (laughs) And about like, man, we should really go see some, you know, certified mental health professionals that can prescribe us meds. I mean, it might it might take you a while to get in. You wanna you wanna start now, so maybe in six months to a year you get in with somebody. I know. (laughs) I got that plenty of time. But the problem is, is you normally have to call to set up the appointment, <laughs> which means I'm going to have to call somebody and I don't want to. It might take me six months to call somebody. It's the worst part. Like, I know. What they expect you, like, you, you have to remember to refill your prescription. You have to call the doctor. It's like, you wonder why as ADHD people do not get these things done. Like, I can do the script because I can do the script on the app. Well, yes, and I can do mine <laughs> on the app now, too, and I remember to refill mine because I use a pill organizer, so I know when I haven't taken them, because the worst part about ADHD oh. is you have no idea if you haven't taken your meds or not. That's super smart. You, I should totally do that. Not that I'm taking any meds currently, right. but you, when I get to that point. You don't want to miss one because it'll, like, mess you up. You know, like, you'll be fine if you miss one, but you're going to notice it. And then the next day, Mm -hmm. it's going to be kind of a smack in the face, usually. Even with, like, the kind that I'm taking, which isn't a stimulant, it's still, like, who body knows when it's not there now. Um, Yeah. And so to make sure that I know I've taken it, because I will not remember, I will auto-take it and then go, shit, did I take my meds? I have no idea. Right. I don't know. And for like my allergy stuff, like it doesn't really matter. Like if I accidentally don't take that, like the world doesn't end. But now I have a medication where I'm like, "Mm, I need to take this at the same time every day or it's going to make a difference. I I used to have have that problem. organizer. I used to have that problem with vitamins where I would take them and I'd be like, did I take my vitamins this morning? I don't remember. But with vitamins, usually if you do like a double dose, it's okay because you just, you know, your body just rejects the rest and right. you just pass it naturally with everything else. Meds are a little bit different. I mean, the worst part about the um, pill organizer, though, is you have to remember to refill it. Um, so then if you you have to get that into your routine, but once that's in your routine, it's pretty easy. Um, they do also make, like, caps you can put on your medication bottles that have a date and a time. Mm. And so when you open it, it sets it to that date and time. And then you'll know literally when the last date and time you opened them. Hmm. Yeah, they're really neat. Interesting. Highly recommend. <laughs> Especially if okay, you have then. like one medication to keep track of, like they're not that bad. I'm just, I've taught myself over so many, many, many years that I don't really need to do that. It works really good for kids because kids don't remember. So, and parents don't always remember. Who are we, by the way? <laughs> 10 minutes I'm in. Ash. I'm out. We are Lobby Cosplay. <laughs> this really is shit cosplay. <laughs> Say. Um, Which is very... Happy holidays, everybody, by the way. 
This is airing the day after Christmas, so we hope you had a wonderful time if you celebrate. And if you don't celebrate, we hope you had a wonderful time anyway. So there are many holidays that have occurred. So there's Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah and Happy Yuletide. And there's so many. You're going to forget Boxing one. Happy Boxing Day <laughs> and New Year's in Japan. And there's just so many holidays that have there's occurred so in many. December that I can't. He, I had I had a started a running list and it got too long. Um, um there that's because there's a ton of them. <laughs> there's so many. It's okay. There's like that there's that meme that floats around. They're like, it's okay if people say happy holidays because there are this many holidays right? between November and January. Exactly. Just enjoy all of your holidays that you have. Yeah, it is the day after Christmas. So it yes. means it's Boxing Day. Ta da! Ta da! For our friends in Canada. Also Kwanzaa. Oh, yes. Happy Kwanzaa. There's so many. And happy everything else that we didn't say. Right? Because I'm sure there's a billion other things that we don't know about. Not an expert in global holidays. No. No. I try not to be an expert in commercialized American holidays, but here we are. Yeah, I know, right? (laughs) But what can we do? Capitalism. Capitalism. Well, I mean, we participated in capitalism last weekend. So. I know. I was going to say, speaking of capitalism, speaking of we went capitalism. to a con last weekend. Oh, my goodness. That was a trip. Um, it was a short trip because Chicago is not super far. That's, yes. Although it, that drive home felt like it took forever. That's because you had the long drive this time instead of the short drive. That's true. Plus, we, we stopped. So that's probably why it felt like it took uh, also that well and i always forget so my brain thinks of you know chicago when i drive in with my family to chicago typically we're not going all the way in we're stopping in like the suburbs or previously like the cons we go to are in rosemont so my brain has the trip ticked at like two and a half hours right but it's three three and a half hours when you go into actual chicago right so, like we're staring at the lake being like What's up, Great Lake? Right. So my brain's still thinking, oh, it should take like two and a half, three hours to get to (laughs) Ash's house. No, no, it doesn't because we hit traffic on the way out. We did not on the way in. We made good time on the way in, even with with our detour. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. So for those of you that didn't catch it already, we went to the Chicago Comic and Entertainment Expo C2E2 last weekend at McCormick Place. Everything went wrong in the morning, and we ended up leaving like an hour, hour and a half after we planned. At least. At least. Um, Oh, (laughs) but before this. So (laughs) Elle has this really awesome blazer. That Um, blazer, I think, was more popular than Oogie Boogie at the con. I I do think so, because you got constant compliments on it. But it is a pretty amazing blazer. So I had bought this dress off of Amazon, and I was like, really excited to get it i'm like i think it'll kind of the color scheme kind of coordinates and you know we won't be like matchy matchy but we'll still like flow together because we're supposed to do this photo shoot for the podcast and it comes and it doesn't fit and i'm like oh i need to find something really fast so i scour the internet find this super duper cute shirt And just jump all in with it. I buy the shirt and then I start looking for matching accessories. And I'm like, I'm spending like a couple hundred bucks by the time this is all said and done because I'm super excited about how amazing this shirt is. And then I sent a screen cap of it to Elle and she's like, oh, I bought the same one. (laughs) We did. (laughs) So we own the same shirt. We do. So we compromised and... I bought yet yeah, another shirt, and Elle wore her shirt for the photo shoot, and I wore my shirt for the live show. I mean, I'm totally fine with otherwise us both wearing that same shirt for the live show, but it probably would have been kind of odd for the photo shoot. It was really funny, though, <laughs> and it really sounds funny. very much like us. Yes, but that shirt so, is really cute. So, uh, But we were on the way to Chicago and we're just chit-chatting as we do in the car and we're talking about these cute little like dollhouse refrigerators that Elle bought and we're like why have we never considered purchasing like a children's toy fridge like for the little play like I used to have one of those big scale play kitchens as a kid and you know they're lightweight they're like hollow hard plastic and pretty durable we're like why didn't we not get one of these 
So I got on Target and I found <laughs> one on the way there. We, we in fact, picked Phil up on the way to C2E2. <laughs> we did. On a whim. It was great. It was on a whim. Coincidentally, the place we wanted to order takeout from was like in the Target parking lot. That's true. We can it worked out very well. We confused many a people with our carrying a refrigerator around. It was really entertaining. Yeah, somebody's like, that's your refrigerator. <laughs> and I was like, yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. But despite leaving late and stopping for lunch and making our random detour to Target, we got there at like the freaking perfect time. <laughs> We roll in, we park, they put us all the way on the top, and we go down and get to check in, and there's, like, nobody there. It was a ghost town on Friday. It was really weird. We're not used to this. No, we're used to, like, C2 being shoulder to shoulder, like, you can't move even on, like, Friday, and it was, no one was there. Yeah, so for the COVID protocols, you had to either download the Clear app and show your vaccination status that way, or you could bring your card. Well, my app wasn't working in McCormick Place because certain spots have terrible reception, so I ended up pulling out my card, which was the longest part of the process. There was no line when we went in to get our badges at Will Call. There was no line, and... Maybe four or five people when we went through security to get on the con floor? Yeah. Maybe. Which, so that was really weird considering when we went in 2020, the, I think it took us about 45 minutes to go in the first time. And then the average in and out was 30 to 45 minutes. So, I mean, that was also because last year we didn't know we had a different line we could get in. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, well, and the other thing, too, with last year, though, is that their will call was, I believe, through the security checkpoint. Yes. So we had to do both. Yes. Before we could go in. Um, And also, we found out that with our speaker badges, we can skip that line and go to the VIP line, which we totally didn't yes, know until later not. in the con. I mean, it makes so much sense because then, like, you don't have to worry about being late for your panel, but we had no idea. But yeah, it was super duper fast and really, really efficient. Yeah, no, they did a good job. Um, The wristbands they had you wear were not the like itchy plastic things. They were like made of ribbon. So they were a lot easier to tolerate for three days. Yeah, they remind me of that ribbon that they make the like the neck lanyards out of. Yeah, so that was because I was a little concerned about it being one of those like pool wristbands that you can get. That get really yeah. gross by day three and get really itchy and mm. like I hate them. Um, trying to hide the stupid thing was fun though throughout the, for the photo shoots, but oh, I well, shoved it, it under my terrible. watch. No one could see. <laughs> it's fine. This is fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually super impressed too with mask compliance. Yeah, for the most part, everybody did a really good job. Um, the helmet thing didn't stick. So they were trying to ban helmets because they wanted to be able to see your medical grade mask or your cloth mask or whatever. That didn't it didn't stick. Like by Saturday, that was gone. Like people well, were in Friday masks. night. Even there were people walking around with helmets and fur heads and everything else. It, it didn't stick at all. Um, not surprisingly. I mean, I don't. I I feel like a Spider Man mask might actually do more good than a regular cloth mask so right i mean i don't really know i'm sure it had something to do with like you know like the darth vader helmets and stuff that blow the air in and out Mm -hmm. um but like yeah i i don't know i mean yeah i don't know not sure i don't know it didn't stick and then as soon as we got through security and are getting ready to walk onto the con floor we get notification that our room's ready Woohoo! Ta-da! Ta-da! Perfect timing! And then we get to move to the floor where our room actually was. Yes. We, we, moved we don't know the why car. they made us park all the way at the top, but Yeah, we moved the car. Yeah, we moved the car. <laughs> <laughs> we could get into the, the third floor coming down, so we did that. I don't know. We did a little sneaky sneak and parked right next to the door. Yes. Which was nice. For all our unloading of our crap. <laughs> the mm-hmm. room. Yes. Not as bad Indeed. as some cons, but... 
Uh, their parking is actually really, really convenient yeah. as long as you're in the main deck. So. I mean, the parking's super convenient if you're willing to pay the price, which we did. So Yeah. I'm an adult and I can pay for parking. It still, it still upsets me how much they charge for parking, but what can you do? Eh, I mean, <laughs> you have options, but... <laughs> That's the you best know, one, in my opinion. I want convenience, <laughs> therefore I'm paying to have convenience. But It's just like everything else. I'm still mad about my $14 burger, though. Oh. Yeah. So the one thing I am, we completely forgot about with where McCormick Place is, is it's in the business district, which means everything closes on the weekend. Literally everything. So your option is pay for Grubhub and hope your food arrives before it's ice cold which is highly unlikely given that nothing is open in the area. Or you have to order from the hotel restaurants where they're going to charge you $14 for just a burger. No, yep, no, no fries. Fr- no, just no a fries burger. Just, just a, a burger. burger. Just the burger. <laughs> it's okay. I don't know. I don't I don't know if we'll ever figure <laughs> out a better solution for C2. Um Again, I am totally willing to pay for convenience because right. if you order a Grubhub, you have to wait. Yeah. And well, and typically you your food is tip. like completely ruined by the time it gets there because it takes them so long. So yeah, you have to tip, and just there were places we could have gone to that maybe ne- weren't necessarily what we wanted to eat, or there might have been a little crowded because um, I know some of the bars in the area were still open. But for not having to leave, especially because it was raining two days out of the time that we were there right um it wasn't super cold which was surprising but it was raining but we didn't have to leave and the food was hot and the food was not well and like chinatown's not that far we just didn't have the time to walk there also that because saturday was weirdly busy because it's less than it's less than a mile it's just we just didn't have time to take out of our day to and i i'm still very iffy about eating in restaurants so Mm. that was kind of part of the whole like we would have walked to chinatown to take our food out and walk back which eh. Eh. (laughs) because we didn't have a microwave in our room this year either so i just don't know how well that would have worked um, yeah, you know, maybe by next year, if things are better, then I'd feel more comfortable like walking down there and eating in a restaurant. But I'm just very like weird about that still. Like walking through that um, walkway where all the restaurants are, that like restaurant row space between like the Hyatt and McCormick Place, just gave me like heebie-jeebies every time because there's like hundreds of people sitting around without masks eating in that space. We <laughs> could have walked really the other way. <laughs> There's another way we could have walked. I know. I was just like, I just, the thought of like trying to eat in a restaurant over the weekend was not going to happen. So like mm. we we were limited on our options partly due to that too, is that I just wasn't going to want to walk to Chinatown and eat in a restaurant because well, we're apparently still the, in a pandemic. Apparently the McDonald's like ran out of breakfast food. Yes, the McDonald's did run out of breakfast food. Not that we would have eaten the breakfast no. food, but somebody was posting about that online. Yeah, they did. They ran out of like everything apparently. Um, They were not prepared. There's a McDonald's in McCormick Place, for those of you that haven't been there. There's like a little mall in McCormick Place, and the only thing that's open on the weekend is the McDonald's. Um, And I have a feeling it's only open when there's events, too. I don't think it's open, like, most weekends. Yeah, there wouldn't really be any reason for it to be open unless there is an event. So, um, yeah, there is McDonald's in McCormick Place. There's like a pizza place in McCormick Place, too, if I remember right. There's a couple places Because there's in the there. little, like, you go into the, the event hall and there's, like, these, like, restaurant towers almost. Because we ate at one of those um, the previous year. And it has, like, pizza and hot dogs and stuff. There's a Starbucks. There is a Starbucks. Um, yeah. There's a handful of stuff. No, I mean, the $14 burger was good, at least. Mm-hmm. It was a good burger. I was just mad at it. You were just mad that it was fourteen dollars with no fries. I didn't get French fries. <laughs> what I wanted was French fries. I mean, we bought we, some. And it was we fine. bought French fries. We just had to pay for them. And I mean, we used Marriott fine. points this year, so our total actually came out like super low for this trip. Um, super like, cheap, insanely low. Um, yeah, no complaints. Because I'm pretty sure with gas and even like some of the food stuff that wasn't in that total, it was under like two fifty easy so for the two of us not for the two of us yeah 
where last year, I think it was almost $1,000 each for us to do CTE2 because that hotel is very expensive. Yeah. Um, And we were there for an extra night last time, Mm -hmm. which we will never come on Friday again (laughs) if we have things to do. If we have things to do. There was too much anxiety for us to show up on Friday morning because we had a photo shoot Friday and we were worried about the crazy that might be the line. Now, if we weren't speakers, we could have had our badges mailed, but we are speakers, so we have to pick them up at will call. Now, if they keep the will call line and the security line separate, I think that's going to help mm-hmm. with those two lines being split up. So I hope they do that again, and I'm going to remember to put that on the feedback form. Yes, please, because I forgot to activate my badge, so I cannot do the feedback form. I mean, I can try to send it to you to see if it'll let you, but... I, but that explains why I've never gotten it before, because... Um, that would be my guess, because I activated my badge. Yeah, I forgot. We there. So. Oh, well. It's not like you have to. <laughs> but um, our photo shoot went well, though, despite like the chaos. Um, Carlos we were was, early. Yes, Carlos was very kind to move it um, a little bit later than we originally planned, just to make sure we could get there. Um, and it was odd doing a photo shoot not in a character. We got to be ourselves. <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> we had fun. It was good. Um, but it'll be good to have some photos of us because, like, we ran into people throughout the weekend who were like, oh, you guys do that podcast because they have no idea what we look like. Right. <laughs> like, people recognized Oogie Boogie in some cases, but no one actually knows what we look like because we just don't have photos of ourselves on our Instagram. Floating around, yeah. Like, they're not floating around. They're just not so. a lot of those. That'll be good, um, especially since we're applying to things outside of cosplay guesting as well. It'll be nice to have photos of us not in a costume. Weird. For more of those entertainment type bookings instead. But no, I, it went well. The basement of the McCormick place worked really well for the style of photo shoots that we needed. Yes. We got to pretend to be a true crime podcast for oh, a little while in the lighting in the basement. <laughs> we had a song and dance party at one point. Yes. I still can't believe how dead it was. So we're used to that space being super crowded because that's where everyone wants to do their photo shoots. And there were maybe like three groups down there. Yeah. Well, it was also Friday. Yes, it was Friday. And I mean, Friday traditionally is less people than Saturday. It was just significantly less people than usual, which I guess shouldn't necessarily be a surprise. I know a lot of people were upset about how C2 was charging even more this year, but had significantly less to offer. Um, yeah, but people still went. Oh, I mean, yeah, we don't go for guests, so. Right. Like, that doesn't mean anything to us in terms of conventions. Like, we don't go to cons for that. Because we had the live show. Right. Which, (laughs) despite the significant lower attendance, we still filled our room, which I think had more seats in it than the year before. Yeah, it was the same room, but I think the seating style is differently. Yes, but we I had, think we had more. I think we had more people. We had tables last time, at least in mm. half the room. Yes, we did not have any tables this time. So no tables. Yeah, <laughs> baby, <gasps> Phil's first show. It was Phil's first show. Phil made per- their appearance on the la- podcast live show for the first time. So at one point we had Phil, and inside of Phil's freezer drawer. Because Phil is a side-by-side with a freezer on the bottom. So inside of their freezer drawer, we had the Itty Bitty Baby Phil from the Phil the Fridge game. And then inside of the Phil the Fridge game, we had one of the little dollhouse fridges. So we had Fridgeception going on. There was definitely Fridgeception occurring. Russian Russian dolls. <laughs> yes, basically we have refrigerator Russian dolls. Um, speaking of yes. the fridge... I cannot believe how serious people take this game. It's super serious. It just strikes people's competitive streaks. No, they were the the lucky two who happened to be part of the um, music act that was going on after us. Yes. um, Got selected to play the fill the fridge game. And boy, did they take it seriously. I thought someone was going to get hurt. I know, like spoons. I was also such worried a, Phil was going to go like game. flying across the room at some point. So He'll I'm be like, fine. Don't, don't, don't hurt Phil. <laughs> yeah. Don't hurt Minnie Phil. Um, we had fun. Yeah, uh, we brought our badge ribbons and passed them out. Yeah, people were very confused by the existence of badge ribbons. 
Yeah, um, they're still not super popular in our area. No, so. the mi- we sh- we'll change it. Yeah, the Midwest doesn't really do them, but people were very enamored with them. Like with the concept of like a badge decoration. Yes. And then you're supposed to collect them and make like giant ribbons, ribbons of, of badge ribbons. Badge ribbons. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I don't know why more people don't do them because literally everyone who takes one is a walking advertisement for you. Right. Like, They're super fun. Like from a marketing standpoint, though, like why not? Yeah, we had fun, though. We had another specialized category just for C2E2, so we're definitely going to keep up with that trend for the live shows. So, yes. All good things. Yes. All good things. The live shows that we can't announce yet. So we did the show and we survived Friday. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and Saturday, we didn't have, like, a ton scheduled necessarily. But we were super busy. We were. I don't know how that happens. We didn't technically have anywhere we had to be for anything originally. No. Um, I wore Oogie Boogie on Saturday. I wore Sarah's Victoria. So we were in spoopy season. Yeah, wrong holiday. Oops. Eh? Eh? <laughs> uh, but we had to run my computer over for the she prop panel in the afternoon because they need it for their PowerPoint. And then it didn't work. Because if yeah. it can go wrong, it will go wrong. There was something with their HDMI hookup, and it just would not do the thing. Unfortunate. Good panel, though. So the panel was super awesome. They had Paisley and Glue, Ganoza Costuming, uh, Bodoni Cosplay, who also goes by Bodoni Italic, Casey Renee, and Yupcat Cosplay. So this was the tech panel. So this was the Sheep Prop Craftsmanship panel. Um, good turnout. Lots of good questions. It... May still be available if you want to pay for the virtual ticket, I believe. I think it's like 30 days. So, yes, at the time of this airing, you'll still have like two weeks left. Yes, because virtual ticket was a $15 ticket that got anyone access to, um, was predominantly panels in Cosplay Central and on the main stage. Um, Mm -hmm. We cheated and did that for the cosplay contest in the evening because... I didn't want to people anymore. <laughs> we did. We're like, we don't want to be in a big room full of bunch of people. So let's order food. This is where the $14 burgers come in. We're, we're going to order food. We're going to invite our friends that also decided that they did not want to go over in person to <laughs> the cosplay contest. And we're going to watch it. But before in we did room. that, we went to the She Prop meetup. Yes. Which was yeah. following the She Prop panel. So I love the She Prop meetup because you get to meet so many people, but I always feel like there's so many more people that I want to get a chance to talk to. Right? Like, it's that weird, like, quantity over quality thing. Like, I want to have these deep, awesome conversations with people so that it's kind of more of a get to know you. But at the same time, there's not enough time for me to do that with literally everybody. (laughs) I know. It was... And it's sad. (laughs) It was really difficult. Um, It was really nice to get to actually talk to Casey Renee. Um, every once in a while, um, we'll exchange messages on Instagram, and it was nice to actually like physically meet her. Buy her book. Buy her book. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm assuming it's amazing. It's not out yet. I don't know. I can only um, assume it's going to be amazing. It. I pre-ordered it, so we, I can let you know in the summer. <laughs> it's covering undergarments, correct? Yes. So corsets, hoop skirts, pennies, mm-hmm. the whole nine yards. Um, all the good. If you ever seen her work, she's obviously a master in all of those areas. Yes. And I look for it, even though I never want to make a ball gown. <laughs> ever. <laughs> I d- I'm not a ball gown person. I can only assume that some of the material will be beneficial for just construction in general. But if you do like to make ball gowns, then it's definitely a uh, must have for sure. Yes. Then we get to meet some other new people while we were there. We got to chat with Shield Maiden Cosplay about her really beautiful bell ball gown. It's super pretty. It was so pretty. I'm just such a sucker for textured fabrics. Yes. I am a sucker for it. I can't do plain fabrics. I just, I don't, I need like a little bit of texture. Mm -hmm. And her bottom layer of her bell dress was like a gold lace. It was really pretty. It was really pretty. It was a really, like, subtle, delicate um, detail. 
that you didn't notice it at first and then when you really looked at the dress you were like oh wow yeah Ooh, i like the, that the, the part that goes over her shoulders had the same piece and then she actually cut one of the flowers out of it and put it on her mask mm-hmm. but now that she was um and she was just a gem to to talk to she was like oh i have your podcast on my saved list <laughs> I haven't listened to it yet. It's so weird to hear that, guys. But I mean, now I know who ap- you are. We love you and we appreciate all of you. We get a little like, I don't know what to call it. I don't know what to I'm- call it either. It was a weird experience because it, I mean, it happened at Fusion too, but we kind of yes. knew the people at Fusion listened to us because we, yeah. we knew them more personally, uh-huh. I guess, because we've done Fusion so many times and we've been in Minnesota a lot. It was really weird to go to a very large convention and have people go, oh, I listen to your podcast. And I'm like, what? You do? It happened a lot. (laughs) You do? (laughs) Really? And like, we did the live show and there were people there because they listened to the podcast? Yes. They were like asking about our executive producer and like recent things that we've talked about. It's like, (gasps) so it's Yeah, so shout out to you. It's weird putting like- Faces to the number that comes in every week. Yes. You know. It was really nice. Kind of an interesting experience. We we love all of your love. We do. We love the love. We got to meet Maker Fishmeal, which I forget. What was their armor? It was from League of Legends. It's a Dragon Master Swain is the character. Like Dragon Master is the skin. I think Swain is the character, but it's from LOL. It was so much so many things to look at there were lots of things i love i love the the arduino pattern that they used in their glove Mm -hmm. because that's similar to a pattern i want to use for something yes if i ever delve into lights right so i I was really excited about all of it i just really liked how clean the armor seams were because i'm not used to seeing clean armor seams so on such big pieces like Mm -hmm. you know it's I find it easier to have cleaner seams on smaller things than to have a seam be clean all the way around in something rather large, whether your armor is 3D printed or thermoplastic or Ava or whatever. Like, the consistency of a seam is harder to keep the larger the item is. Right. So I was just impressed by her, as particularly the apparatus that was um, part of the wing structure that was just really clean. Um. Which, of course, I went up to her and went, this is going to sound really weird, but we judge contests, and I just need you to know that your armor seams are really clean. (laughs) (laughs) I can confirm that did happen. I was standing right there when it was said. And then when she realized who we were, she was like, oh, okay. (laughs) So again, oh, I listened to your podcast to learn how to enter the contest. And I I was like, my heart. That's why we started (laughs) doing this to begin with. That is why we started podcasting, right? and that's why we continue to podcast. That might have made, because that might have made my entire yeah. weekend, because that is literally why we started this podcast. It's true. It was because we can't make it to every con that we would like to, but we have 20 years of knowledge we'd like to share, so that really warmed my heart when she was like, I listened to all your competition episodes to prepare for the contest tonight. It's like, oh, we love you. We love you. We hope to see yeah. you again. Yes. Of course. And we got to see Full Metal Fairy in her Loki. We run into you frequently. It's yes. always as Loki. Also, almost always. Pretty much. I can think of, um, I can think of maybe like one other costume, but we but most mostly Loki. We've known Full Metal Fairy on and off for multiple years at this point. Um, yeah, and it's been fun to see them grow in their crafting. And we got to meet their friend Cybermedic Cosplay, who had a very fun Rick and Morty costume on. For the weekend. The scales look like they must have been a pain to put together. <laughs> so we got to meet Air Bubbles cosplay in their Chandra from Magic the Gathering costume. Fire. It was very shiny. Much sparkle, so shiny. If it's the card that I'm thinking of, it's called a Chandra, or Chandra, Chandra, I'm not sure the pronunciation, Dressed to Kill. Oh, I like <laughs> it. Which, which I just love That's the fantastic. pun in that because it's kind of fabulous. I mean. Amazing. Well, she was dressed to kill, so. Yeah, but I think it, I think she's from like one of the Planeswalker sets. Oh, okay. So. I don't know enough don't know. about magic. But yeah, it was really pretty. I also just thought the aesthetic would work really well for Azula, but obviously it wasn't her. No. <laughs> so. No. Um, it was not, but I could see that. Like, has that same vibe. And we got to meet M. Poppins cosplay in her yes. fabulous Maleficent. 
from Disney's Descendants. Yes. <laughs> which we're now obsessed with. <laughs> that was one of those things that I binge watched while I was on maternity leave. And the songs are so good. Oh, they're so good. I had always seen the costumes pop up on Sheeprop. Especially everybody really likes the mal dress. I think it's from the end of the second yeah, movie. The big purple ball gown thing. Yes. Yeah. Which, if you really wanted to, you could make that into a quick change because that's actually the second out of three looks that she wears during that, like, scene. Oh, goodness. I know. <laughs> but but the, the songs are amazing. They're amazing. <laughs> They're so They're good. So good. <laughs> They're so good. There's so much material there. Yes. Uh, but Maleficent's gorgeous. And also... We were talking about fabric textures, like, mwah, chef's kiss. So many textures. Because when you have a costume that's legit all black, you, you textures your friend. And yes. she did an amazing job in variating all of the different textures in that costume. It was stunning. Well, and I saw her walking around the day before when she was wearing her Cruella de Vil. Yeah. But we just didn't say hi at that point because we didn't know her yet well i was a bit overwhelmed on friday not gonna lie friday friday was a lot i was like this is all brand new again and i don't know how to people Um, what is this so out of practice right well and we also got to chat with paisley and glue so yes um judged me last year during the masquerade competition by her book. By her book, too. <laughs> next I, well, next summer also, I think maybe? so. I think She's so. doing one on fabric smocking. Yes. So by... I believe it's the same publisher that Jedi Amanda and Casey Renee use. So. Also by Jedi Amanda's book. Buy all the by books. Buy all the books. Just buy them all. You're going to yes. need them. I have yet um, to buy a book from any of these practicing cosplayers that hasn't been more than useful. So Absolutely. I mean, so that's the benefit. Buy, they actually do the this books. every day, so... They know what's useful. Mm -hmm. But it was just, it was really nice to talk. Like, I've never been able to do that. It was nice to be able to chat. We actually have, like, more in common. She's an over 30 cosplayer as well. So, (laughs) which I think most of us were. Yeah, I think Um, so. At least that were on the sheep prop panels, which I think is really interesting. Um, I think most of us had surpassed the year of 30. (laughs) (laughs) I have very surpassed the year of 30 at this point. Level 30. I am way closer to level 40 now than I am level 30. So. I am a level 35 cosplayer. Yeah. I know. Level 37. <laughs> it sounds so much more badass when you talk about it like levels. It does. Maybe that's just how we're going to have to talk about it since I'll be level 40 in like a couple years at this point. So. <laughs> But it just, it makes me miss being closer to Chicago and being closer to, like, a larger community. Um, Because they were talking about, like, the photography meetups and, like, all the stuff that they can do, like, outside of cons. And the charity stuff that they do. And the charity stuff. And it's like, I can't be involved in any of that because we just don't have it here. Yeah. Um, There's an itty-bitty community, like, up where you are. But where I am, there's, like, nobody. Yeah. I mean, we've got, like, a little bit, but they're significant. Like, we love you all, but you're significantly younger than us. So it's kind of like, I don't know. You know, the Chicago community has a lot more older cosplayers that are still Mm -hmm. part of the community. So um, kind of like... HDC, who had his fancy booth with his fancy glue guns. Um, also, your setup looked amazing. Um, that was incredible. We're so sorry that we did not say hi to you, but you looked really busy. And I will try to remember next time to say hi to you anyway. Because I had messaged him afterward. He was like, you should have just said hi to me. Why didn't you just come say hi to me? I'm like, dude, you were busy. <laughs> I did yeah. not want to interrupt you. <laughs> But he had this really cool hot glue sponsor. Now I can't remember exactly what the sponsor was, but it was. I think it was Sherbonder. It yes, yes, it was. And I did not get to try them, and I wish that I had. But they come in other. Next. They come in multiple colors. Next time. Like oh, so I don't have to look at that like yes nastiness that is glue. Yes, they come in like different colors, so you can use colors that like match your like project and stuff. Weird. Um. <laughs> Tim brings his booth at other cons sometimes as well, so keep a lookout. They were just at home at. I think most of these people were actually just at home at. I mean, a lot of them went. 
I do not envy that's... you guys having to come to C2 and then turn around and go to Hallmat. And then that turn around terrible. and go immediately to Hallmat. That, that sounds yeah. awful. And then Christmas. Ta-da! That just sound that sounds terrible. <laughs> like there's a part of me because Hallmat looks like a really good freaking time. It looks like Colossal Con in Florida, basically. However, it is the week before Christmas. <laughs> Uh, well, and the other thing about Hallmat is you have to go early so you can go to like Universal. Well, or yeah, Disney. it's it's a week long process going to Hallmat. You don't it you don't just go to Hallmat like you go to Disney or Universal and you go to Hallmat. Like right, it's, so it's a process, but it's the week before Christmas. But it's the week before Christmas. Like if it was like two weeks before, we could probably pull it off. But it's the week before Christmas. Oh, the original Medieval Times is down there. Is it really? Yes, it's a fun time. They have a little village. It's cool. <laughs> Maybe someday, but probably not. <laughs> Unless yeah. whole map moves, probably not. That's a that's a I rough one. I don't think it was always the week before Christmas, though, because I remember it being earlier than that. I don't remember. I mean, it's for sure always been in December. Maybe. Close to Christmas. Maybe if they have an international qualifier. And we conveniently already have something. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, or they announce it early enough that we right. can have something. Deets. International Deets. qualifiers don't like to do that, though. So. No, oh, they're like, surprise! Maybe not. Uh, um, contest. But yes, we went and we met cool people. And then on our way back, we ran into cosplay and cocktails. After we were just talking about, like, man, we didn't see them. Oh, at the podcast meetup, we failed to mention. So oh, there yes. wasn't one officially on the schedule but some of us got together and one of the producers is like i'm gonna host this so we had a little impromptu one in the lobby so we had a couple production staff uh, we got to see ghostly again they were there um bob after dark was there so we were in our spooky costumes talking to the people from the paranormal cost podcast <laughs> which and- is kind of funny now that you think about it Yep, words are hard. Um, Paranormal podcast. Yes, it was kind of... Here's us in our comedy cosplay podcast standing there with a bunch of people who do paranormal podcasts. Well, she's wearing her Oogie Boogie costume right. and I'm a vampire. But then they're all telling us like all the cons we need to submit to that like podcasts. So I was like, sweet, thanks guys. I mean, that is the entire point of meetups is for like making friends and networking. I mean, they were super so, nice. Yeah. But yeah, we got to meet Jesse and Paige literally walking through the restaurant row area and they were sitting down to eat. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's them because they yeah. had told me they were dressing as Rapunzel and Gothel. And so yes. I was like, I'm, I'm just going to I'm just going to go for it go and for hope it. that it's them. Do and it was them. And it was. And it was very nice to chat with them. So we're hoping to do a collaborative episode um, in season three. So you'll have to stay Maybe. tuned. Maybe we'll actually get to hang out with them in a con for more that would than like be nice, five minutes. I, I still don't think they're, if I remember right, they're not located that far from us either. So No. They don't go to the same conventions we do. So that is kind of one of the interesting things, but like one of the harder parts as well. Because they tend to go to a couple really large conventions where we go to like anime conventions and stuff. So, yeah. Um, but yes, hopefully our paths in person will cross at some point. But we know they will cross via the internet for an episode and yes as we but, mentioned we did not want to go after all of this wait to wait in line to watch the cosplay competition but we wanted to support all the people we know that were in it so we bought virtual ticket so we could eat dinner and watch it from our room with laughing rat yeah we hooked the laptop up to the tv in the room That's so, right. we could, so we could watch it on the tv that was an adventure. <laughs> don't ask questions you don't want to know the answer to yes we hooked it up so we could watch it on the tv which was a good choice because it ended up being a lot shorter than i thought it was going to be it was really short it was really short like all the attend like the contestants were across the stage in less than 30 minutes i mean because it took a couple minutes to get started because of course nothing in a cosplay contest ever starts legit on time i think i've been to like two ever that legit started when they were supposed to so there's a couple minutes of buffer in the beginning to get started and then yeah i think it was maybe 35 minutes in total, like, including the buffer at the beginning that we're like, was that the last walk on? Yeah, it was really, it was really fast. Well, maybe that's what they were told to maybe do. Maybe it was. I don't know. It was, it was speedy. But since they had two hours blocked out for it, I kind of expected it to be longer. And I guess we're also used to Crown, where Crown is actually two competitions in 
three competitions in one usually. Yeah. Where they're doing the Chicago prelims, the US finals, and then the international finals. Not anymore. Not anymore, but it was. <laughs> that might have been part of it. It just felt it felt really fast. I enjoyed everything that we saw go across the stage. And we actually got to see a lot of them on the floor on Saturday. Um, so it was cool seeing them go across the stage also. And we knew some people that were in it. So that's always fun to, you know, hang out, support your friends. Several of the people from the Sheep Prop meetup were in it too. So it was good times. They had really good judges this year. They did. I was very happy with their judges that they picked. So they had Trizrax, which does like monster fabrication. So a lot of the really cool like FX stuff. Um, Thranduart, who is a gem. I just adore him. Like nobody's business. They're amazing. <laughs> um, and Jedi Amanda. So who's also amazing. Yes, and I just loved her Yennefer dress. Uh, yeah. But I, I just love all of Yennefer's dresses, though, so... Truth. I just I haven't figured out why I haven't made one yet. I don't know, but... Probably because I couldn't see the floor in my craft room, but I can now. <laughs> Although I, I really, really like the green and gold Tris dress, so... Oh, also pretty. <laughs> It is really pretty. It's very... Is that the really low-cut one yep. in the front? Yep. It's really pretty, though. I mean, that could be a thing. Yeah, then I have to make a... It's not a ball gown with a hoop true. skirt. It's true. It's not a ball gown with a hoop skirt, and I just don't. The closest <laughs> I'm ever getting to a ball gown is barrel. <laughs> it just, it's yes. not happening. I am not one to wear a ball gown. It's not going to be a thing. But I was overall like, pretty happy with their selection that they had. They had... Even though they don't, they were doing celebration and not crown because crown next is going to be next August during C2E2 2022. So they didn't have a crown qualifier at this one, but there was still, I think, a good mix of, you know, sewing and armor and just more fun FX type entries. So. And they also did what Crown is now doing, where you have a third, second, and first place, and no more categories, which everybody's upset about for Crown. I'm sad. Um, yes. <laughs> that's been the consensus of those that either have been interested in entering Crown for a long time or have been in Crown that everyone wants the categories back. So if you too want the categories back, report that on your C2E2 uh, on your C2E2 survey, survey because it would be do it, do it. Really nice to get categories back. Um, my understanding is in Europe, Europe doesn't do categories, so that's probably part of it with the merger that mm. um, it went to third, second, and first place. But we like or variety and we like categories here, so they could add the categories to the European they one, and could. they could be the same because they never gave money for the category awards, so it doesn't do anything. To your cost. they No, they gave, like, certificates. They didn't give out. Sometimes it was, like, sponsorship stuff. Like, if they had, like, an Arta gift card or, you know, that kind of thing. But they didn't. You only got money if you were in the, like, first, second, third place. Mm. So it's not yeah, a cost cause, thing. Yeah, because if it was a sponsor. Well, and they had sponsors for that kind of stuff anyway. So right. I know one year, I think one of the wig companies gave out certificates to everybody. Like, right. participation. Participation. Which, it's a juried show, so, I mean, getting in is a thing in and of itself, but right. that is a rant for another day. That is. <laughs> um, but our third place winner was Victoria Meacham, and she was uh, Marion Lavore from uh, Critical Role, so the Ruby of the Red Sea, which is like a demon succubus character. She She's really cool. <laughs> mm. um, this design is really neat. There was a lot of textures. So many textures. Textures galore. Is she like a tiefling? Yes, I believe so. Okay. I don't know a lot about Critical Role, though, so I could be wrong. Um, but I recognize the character immediately. I mean, I don't know a lot about Critical Role, but I do know some of Dungeons & Dragons. Right. So. <laughs> Speaking of Dungeons & Dragons, the second place was the Raven Queen from Dungeons & Dragons. Um, I tried. I cannot find her anywhere online. Um, look at that segue. <laughs> yeah, that was a neat costume. <laughs> so there is no, like, official artwork for that. So that was an original design. Like, Excellent. completely, um, is my understanding. But the it was a really interesting combination of armor work and fabric. 
Um, and I think there were some light up bits. There was it a was little really, bit of light up bits. It was pretty. It was fun. Um, but yeah, that first place that was a transformer that could actually move. I know. I was so impressed because whenever I see transformers, they don't move particularly well. Yes, and Brad, I don't know that I will necessarily say your Instagram name correctly. I believe it is Bimbits, but it's B-M-B-I-D-S. They are actually from Dubuque. So check that I saw out. That. Yeah, they were actually walking yeah. around Dubuque like today, taking pictures with kids. Um, oh, that's awesome. Right, but they did um, the Transformer sound wave, and it was amazing. <laughs> Um, I greatly enjoy Soundwave. Like that was that was the Transformer that I had as a kid. Well, because my big pet peeve with Transformer costumes is they almost always can't move. They're just pretty statues yeah. to look at. And this thing, he can walk, like legit, is articulated. Can move his arms. Can move his waist. Can move his head. He can move his legs. He can actually walk. It was nice. Like it's impressive. <laughs> so of oh, course, I like, found the. I'm more most impressed about the fact that the man can walk in this costume <laughs> like the craftsmanship was stunning but i'm like he can walk <laughs> good job brad right say it ain't so is who is listed as the raven queen oh okay and that's s-e-w say it ain't so oh that's cute i know i like it but i'm a sucker for a good pun so you know <laughs> we also just have a couple other costumes that we just wanted to mention like Perler Tricks, who did the Borderlands Woody with the RC. Please? That was amazing. <laughs> that was so much fun. So they typically do most of their costumes out of Perler beads, by the way. As um, If you look them up. I, I would guess that by but, the name, yes. Um, this Woody was fantastic. Like, the details were amazing, and the little RC car just made it for me. Well, and I know that some people are kind of over the whole borderlands like painting schematic yeah. but this was amazing I and i loved all the little like details when right? it came to all the little toy story nods and i was like yeah i don't know if i'm ever gonna be over the borderlands painting style like i don't care I mean, about that game at all but i love that style <laughs> it's super fun like i it's it's really awesome to look at don't play i don't <laughs> know it also give a shout out to our Look at our young cosplayers getting on this stage, Full Metal Fairy and Oddly Cosplay. Yes. Got themselves up there on that I big, remember big when stage. You were, you were we competitors long ago. We do. We're so proud of you. But we uh, we wedged out and hung out in the room the rest of the night, because why not? We, we stayed up all night watching random masquerades from other We did. Cons. We did. We were up until like why we did one or two in the morning watching masquerades from other competitions because we're like, well, we got to watch that one. Let's watch some more. I don't even know how that started. <laughs> and we stayed up watching like other people's like cons we've never been to that we were just Rabbit like, let's hole. see what this con's masquerade looks like. That's exactly how that went. It was YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> like the computer was already hooked up like, to the TV. It was just... probably like four hours, if not more, of YouTube of us just watching random cosplay masquerades. And then it was two <sighs> in the morning, and we were like, "Shit, we need to sleep." Because I have a panel like, at eleven a.m. Oops, oops. Yes, yes. We did the she prop has your back panel, which is more of their um culture related panel that mm -hmm. uh, she prop typically puts on. I ended up moderating. Yes. Because um, that happens sometimes. <laughs> that happens sometimes, yeah. And uh, thank you to Abby Cat Cosplay for meeting with me very quickly, like two days before, to give me a rundown on how that works. By the way, please see their costume from ECCC. <laughs> please. <laughs> please. They did it. the Frenchman from Monty Python. I shall taunt you a second time. And it makes me so happy. As it should. So happy. And I will say, and normally I would be like, oh, and I don't know how this went. I'm going to say I was a decent moderator. It went well, I think. I guess if you're questioning that, you could go back and watch the video I that's don't still on really the want virtual to, ticket but for another two weeks. Our panel members seemed satisfied. Yeah. Because as expected on a Sunday, our audience turnout wasn't massive. That puts a lot of pressure on the pressure. moderator. To I think you keep things kept the going. Flow. You kept the flow um, pretty good. But 
we had good questions from the few people that were there, which was really great. <laughs> Helps. Yeah. Um, but we, it was us, it was Paisley and Glue, April Gloria, and then Sharice, who also sometimes goes by Lady Danger. I had a little bit of imposter syndrome at first with this panel because I'm like, these people are way bigger than us. <laughs> but then you meet them in person, you're like, you're all so lovely. Yes, they're all super lovely. All I so got lovely. to sit next to Sharice. Oh my gosh, she is a gem. She is a gem. Her makeup is stunning. Um, she has her own makeup line, by the way. It's called Fleeky Friday. I I need the color shifting eyeshadow. Yes. I I need it. It comes in like a bunch of different shades and it's necessary. <laughs> um, for what? I don't a hundred percent know, but I know that I need it. Right? I feel like for a Sailor Moon villain, it's all very appropriate. I mean, yeah. So I feel like I need it in my life. Um, obviously, we already told you about Maggie's book. So yes. So look for that. April always has something going on. You just yes. kind of got to check and see on her. Um, I just love her feed, though. Yes. It's just a little bit of general. everything. Yes. I agree with that. Well, and she's she's got a project that I want to do that she's working on. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> I need this. Oh, in that's my life. right. She is, isn't she? So, yeah, I'm really excited about that. So, but it was also lovely getting to meet her as well. I know. I like meeting people in person know, that we vaguely so nice. that we vaguely know online. I know <laughs> it's like, like I randomly see you in your Instagram feed, but I've never talked to you before. Let's be friends for Let's real. Let's be real. friends, not just on the internet. <laughs> so, but overall the panel went really well and then we were late tired. We, like, wandered around the hall aimlessly, like, oh, we should probably buy something. <laughs> yeah, you know, Christmas gifts, that kind of thing. I bought a game. I bought I'm a game. Give it, I, I gave it to my husband yesterday at this point, so we'll see how it goes. But it's one of those games that you can play with just two people, which right. I feel like is important because it's us and a baby. Right. So, <laughs> baby and a dog. really play and neither can the dog. So, so. we're kind of limited. Right. As far as that goes. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we rolled out of there and got some sushi on the way. and We did. We stopped back at the same exit where That's we right. went to Target and got sushi and these really delicious fruity drinks. Yes, those were good. Um, but yeah. We, we made it through our first big con in about two years. Yeah, it was a little weird. It was a little weird. Because it was, it was technically last year, but it's been almost two years. Yes. Which is really weird to think about. Yeah. Because it's the same con, but they're just February, right. December. And at this point in time, we cannot announce our next convention yet. So you'll just have to Alas. stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, my understanding is we may know before this comes out, but we didn't know before we recorded today. So we'll see. I I guess if you heard an update already, then you know. And if you didn't, then you'll be ready to expect one. I would I would think by the last episode of the season, we should be able to tell you. Cool. Hopefully. I like it. Maybe. I like it. We'll see. Because obviously we're not doing a lot of cons this year because of Spain. So And COVID. And COVID. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> COVID and still COVID. could trip up our plans here. So... You never know. That was our adventure at C2E2. Um, now, whenever we do a live show, Phil will come with us. Yes. Um, Phil loves stickers. And magnets. And magnets. So if you want to bring an offering to Phil, you are more than welcome to bring him stickers and magnets and things of that nature. Yes. Phil is a fan. Phil will wear them for you. Yes. Phil loves all the things. Phil so. does love all the things. But no, it was it was a good weekend overall. So um, there are some guests that ended up with COVID. So make sure you go test if you were there. Yep, I've already tested twice and I'm good so far. But yeah, that's... I mean, that's, that's just going to happen, it. though. That's just... It is. I mean, it's... Even if we had all the vaccinated people and the unvaccinated people testing, it still can happen. I mean... Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was going to happen to somebody, but I mean, especially if you are a guest and you are expected to be like front and center face to face with like pretty much everybody. Like, I feel like you're more at risk than just a random con goer who has more opportunity to kind of direct their own 
interactions yeah. with people. The, the so. people trapped in the dealer's hall are by far the most at risk yeah. for getting COVID. <laughs> yes. Um, and we did not spend a lot of time in the event hall. like, And that's kind of our plan for the foreseeable future is to not spend a lot of time in these event halls when we're at cons so that well i mean honestly we don't spend a lot of time in the no unless anyway. unless we have a table or something we don't <laughs> typically spend a lot of time in the in the main event hall space anyway but but yeah it was good so thanks for joining us for our trip down memory lane from last weekend that's right we will have yeah. one more episode this season and then we will go on hiatus for a short period as we prepare for season three. season three. But of course, just like last year, we've got some stuff for you to post in the interim. So don't be sad. That's right. We won't be completely gone. We just, I don't know. Around. Around. We'll be around. We'll be around. You are probably going to get some listeners episodes in the interim. Spoiler alert. Yep. You all love those listener episodes, though. The numbers game. say that you love them. So. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am Ash. And I am Elle. We are Lobby Cosplay. And this is Shit Cosplayers Say. Wishing you a very happy new year. Woo. You've been listening to Shit Cosplayers Say, an LVC production. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Podcast SCS. Our website is lavicosplay.com. Have a fun, crazy con or cosplay-related story? Absurd cosplay question? Or just something in general to share with us? Email us at podcastscs at gmail.com. Thank you for listening, and remember, just because you can doesn't mean you should.